What's up everyone? As you can see, I've gotten cars moved around. I finally have the old Impreza Outback Sport inside. Um, this is the car that I ended up putting the single over cam EJ257 engine into. Uh, the, I drove the car for about a year and a half. The engine was really strong. Uh, it did blow a little bit of oil and it was definitely uh, fueling rich. <laughs> so uh, because this, this car is basically coming off the road, eventually put the engine from this car into the red one um, there's going to be some few little things to get it to work properly uh, and I'm not a hundred percent sure the route I'm going to take yet but I want to be sure that I've got a really good mechanically running engine um, it seemed to run really well before I pulled the car off the road but um, you never know that number four cylinder uh, definitely had low compression with a cracked piston in it uh, all I basically did was put in new pistons with rings, slapped on some 251 heads with gaskets, and uh, here we are this much further along. So I expect some compression differences between cylinders. Um, if we get one that's really low, possibly number four, or number one. I think number one, uh, I remember something with the rings. I didn't have like the new set of piston rings that I had purchased. There was like one missing or two missing. So. I had to like reuse some of the old rings on the new pistons. Anyways, it's kind of a hack together engine. It works awesome. And uh, I just kind of want to do a health check to know where it's at before it goes into the other car. So something else I would like to try is I did get the OBD2 Wi-Fi adapter um, for, you know, connecting my head unit to the car uh, on the Red Impreza. But I think I'm going to try it on this car. I may... There may be a possibility of using this ECU harness with the other ECU harness and kind of using both computers to run that other car, um, one for the actual car and one for the engine. Um, so I kind of want to hook up the Wi-Fi adapter onto the old Impreza uh, while it's kind of warming up and getting the engine warm to do our compression test. I am going to actually see if I can connect and make sure the ECU communicates with the tablet so that if that ECU ends up its way into the new car, at least I know it's going to work fine with the head unit. So yes, over the coming weeks, I will be stripping this car down. I want the complete drivetrain out of it, so I'll be probably taking the rear diff, the trans, the engine. I would imagine the seats are coming out, the wheels will come off, some of the brake parts will come out. Uh, the suspension, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to leave it into the car. I do need the car to roll away, so tow truck needs to be able to pick it up and roll it away. I've got four steel, 16 inch steel rims that with winter tires mounted. I'm going to try and take those into work this next week, break them down, put some scrap tires on those rims, put them back onto the car so that when it goes, it's just got steel rims with junk tires on it. So for today, all I'm really going to do is just run the car, warm it up, um, make sure it communicates with the tablet, and then go ahead and, and do the compression test. If need be, I'll go ahead and do a leak down test. I don't think I'll need to have to but then uh, at least I'll know how I'll have a good engine before I start pulling it out. So the car is running, it's warmed up. Uh, I'm not going to spend much too much time doing this, but this is my cheap little tablet and I have the Wi-Fi adapter in the OBD2 port. Uh, I know that the Bluetooth adapter would probably work with the tablet, but the head unit seems to have a problem with Bluetooth, so I just want to try the uh, the tablet and I have been able to connect. I don't know if it's going to auto connect or. Uh, it looks like it's connecting automatically. And it's already coming up with data. Uh, so we're about 700 RPM. So it certainly follows data and will graph um, a few things. This is like the free version and the torque app, uh, basically to get it, the torque app to work in portrait mode or landscape mode like this, you have to purchase the full app. So I probably will go about doing that. I just want to make sure that, that this kind of setup is going to work for me um, before spending any money, of course, even though it is only $5, it doesn't really matter. but. 
So yeah, there's basically at least an idea that it does work and it will operate for me. So if I have this harness into the other car, at least I know I'll be able to read data uh, right from the head unit. It's just something I've kind of thought of and I wanted to make sure that it would work with this ECU and harness, which it seems it does. I just wanted to make sure, test everything, make sure it works okay. And, and now I'll be ready to do some more testing on the other car. But yeah, let's, uh, now that I'm pretty much warmed up to operating temperature, I'm gonna shut down and uh, let it cool down just a little bit and then pull some plugs out. So here it is in all its glory. Uh, there is oil stainage just about everywhere. Uh, the breathers have been puffing a little bit of oil, which makes me think there is some blow by, but uh, because it performs so well, I'm not too, too concerned. And I think I'm going to redesign my catch can and um, the ventilation to the engine. I think that's part of my issue. So realistically, in order for me to do a compression test, I can get rid of a lot of this stuff. I don't actually need it on the car anymore. The air intake, the intercooler, um, the plugs will have to come out and the wires disconnected. So I'm going to set up the camera, move a bunch of stuff, and then we'll get started with the compression test. So now that I have the plugs out, I'm actually quite surprised on how great all of them look. Number three seems to have the most color to it. Um, so that's number three, number one, number two, number four. And I'm just, uh, I'm very surprised to see how clean they look. So these have about 15,000 kilometers or 9, 10,000 miles. And I mean, even the electrodes on them are just nice and straight cut. They barely have any wear to them. Um, the gap looks, looks great. Yeah, I would say number three is the less worn one. The other cylinders might be maybe a little bit lean a little bit hot uh, but yeah it looks good so now I'm going to uh, start the compression test to see what happens with that And we've gotten to the problematic cylinder number four. Now I have my own report, but number four has 50 PSI. It's running half, half the compression of every other cylinder at least, more like 60%.
So to be perfectly honest, uh, the compression test is beyond my expectations. I know most good running STI engines will run around this compression or higher, maybe up to 150 is a good used engine. Um, I've got 137, 137, uh, 142, and 135. So the highest variance is only seven PSI, uh, which is well below what the difference can, is allowed to be. Um, all cylinders are really even and basically they just kind of show that it's a used engine. So basically what the plugs and the compression numbers tell me is I've got a really solid engine here. I've got nothing to really worry about. Um, the, the bit of oil that's coming out of the, uh, the ventilation, I, you know, it might still be a little bit of blow by, but I think it just needs to be routed differently. Um, it's not working the way that I had planned initially. And I've always had a little bit of oil coming out from it. Um, other things that I've noticed, the valve cover, the valve cover seemed to be leaking on both sides a little bit. I thought I put new valve cover gaskets in, but it's possible I reused them. I'd have to go back and actually look at the footage because I don't remember. Uh, do a lot of those jobs as you saw last week on that JDM um, EJ20K. I did those valve cover gaskets, uh, so I it's hard to remember if I've if I did them on this motor when I put it back together. Um, cause I always had the thoughts that the engine was going to come back into the car. So, so the turbocharger, uh, it's an old TD04 that I got from a friend for doing a small job for him. Uh, it basically pushed me into turbocharging my car. So it's, uh, it's old. Uh, now I did rebuild this thing about five, six years ago and, uh, it's got some up and down play, but it has zero in and out play. Um, at the time when I built that thing, uh, the journal bearings that I ended up getting in the pack did not properly fit. So I, I was only able to actually replace all the seals in it. And uh, it's, it's caused the thing to last this much longer and it still creates great boost. Now I'm only running a 5 PSI actuator on it, so I don't need a lot out of this turbo. Um, so I, do, I will probably end up reusing it still, even though I have two more turbos. So like I said, the valve cover gaskets rewrote the emissions. Um, a, the power steering is obviously going to be replaced by the other power steering that's on the car. Um, the radiator is going to come out. I'm not quite sure about fueling, whether we're going to be using the harness and ECU that's in the car and trying to reprogram it with some different injectors, or if I will try and retrofit this setup to the other intake manifold and then use this ECU and harness. I'm not 100% yet. I, I would like it to be as reliable as can be, and this setup's been really reliable for me, uh, even though it's very mechanical, and uh, there's hose and lines going everywhere. So yeah, we'll finish it with the alarm going off in the car. It just keeps on doing that. I had to snap the wire off the siren. Uh, but at least now I know I have a really good solid running engine, and the uh, compression numbers are awesome. It's just got a couple little leaks that I'd like to take care of. Uh, realistically, the engine's got to come out, have a good inspection of the clutch. I have a good idea that I'm going to have to put a new disc in it, so I'll have to keep an eye out for discs. Um, I may actually go to like a six puck this time. I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, just a couple little gaskets and other little parts, and uh, we'll be all re ready to reuse it. I do need to make some more room to be able to kind of store things temporarily. Uh, while parts are coming off this car but uh, yeah it's at the point that I'm ready to start stripping stuff and w once all the stuff I need is off of it all the scrap metal that I have will go back into the car with some scrap wheels and off it will go but yeah if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you're new here please consider hitting that subscribe button for me leave your questions and comments further down below and I'll see you in the next one